Okanichi Speedway is something of a well-known secret. In its heyday, it was massively popular, and there are still people around who remember it. But then it was abandoned for decades, and was almost forgotten, until it was rediscovered only in the last 20 years. Basically, you have an old dirt racing track that was one of the very first in NASCAR. It was left to nature for 30 years, and now it's a beautiful park with an amazing story to tell. This is a park for walking. With some 44 acres and just over 4 miles of trails, you can walk along the banks of the Eno River or take a lap around the old dirt track. You can really get a sense of its glory days when you visit now. Some of the buildings, like the ticket office and refreshment stand, have been restored, and you can take in the scenery from the concrete stands on the hill. There's some really nice touches like old walls and vintage race cars to help you imagine what it would have been like. The story of the Okanichi Speedway goes way back. Let's acknowledge some history first. Long before Europeans showed up, the Sioux-speaking natives of the Eno and Okanichi lived along the banks of what is now known as the Eno River, in present-day Hillsboro, North Carolina. That's where the name Okanichi comes in. This land was taken over by Europeans in the mid-1700s. In 1794, a Scottish immigrant named James Hogg purchased the land, and several generations later, in 1891, a Hogg family descendant sold the land to Julian Shakespeare Carr, a powerful industrialist and namesake of the town of Carborough. It's also worth pointing out that Carr openly supported the Ku Klux Klan and publicly argued African Americans should not be allowed to vote. We may take a closer look at that history in another video. Carr's Okanichi farm operation was huge, raising sheep, pigs, and some 1,500 chickens, as well as cultivating alfalfa. Carr built a half-mile horse racing track along the bend of the Eno River. His farm took massive damage in 1919 and never fully recovered. By the 1920s, Carr was in failing health and the land was parceled and sold as smaller farmlands. It wasn't until 1947 that a small propeller plane flew overhead. Piloting that plane was one William France, an auto enthusiast from Washington, D.C., who often skipped school as a teenager so he could run laps in his family's Model T Ford before his father came home from work. If Bill France's name isn't familiar to you, here's a bit of backstory. He moved his family from D.C. to Daytona, Florida in 1935 to escape the Great Depression. He had $100 in his pocket. But why Daytona? Up until that time, the fastest cars and drivers were in Europe, mainly France and Belgium. But new automobile land speed records were now being set in Daytona, and that was what drew Bill France. At first he found work painting houses, then worked at a car dealership, and later opened his own service shop. You may be aware that in the 1920s, under Prohibition, illegal moonshine and liquor distilling was huge. In the Appalachian Mountains in particular, operators would soup up cars for speed and handling, and then use them to transport liquor across state lines and evade local and federal law enforcement. In the 1930s, after Prohibition was repealed and bootlegging was no longer necessary, many of these drivers turned to racing as a means to earn a buck. Bill France took up racing in Daytona, and he met and raced with many of these former bootleggers. Around that time, France took up small aircraft aviation. Which brings us back to his 1947 flight over Julian Carr's land in Hillsborough. Bill France saw the old horse track along the Eno River and thought it would be a great place to race automobiles. At the time, racing was disorganized and track owners would often skip out on paying the drivers. France wanted to change that, and in 1947 he formed NASCAR, the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing. Bill France purchased the Hillsboro land in 1948, and just a few months later, Okanichi Speedway saw its first automobile races. This made the .9 mile dirt track in Hillsboro, North Carolina, one of the two very first NASCAR race tracks. For 
20 years, Okanichi Speedway, later renamed Orange Speedway, was a destination. People would come from other states to watch races held on Sundays. An audience of 15,000 was considered average. Famous drivers who raced this clay track include Fireball Roberts, Ned Jarrett, Junior Johnson, and Richard Petty. By the late 1960s, local ministers and church clergy were pretty frustrated with the large crowds forming at the racetrack instead of in their pews. An effort was organized to put pressure on the track, and in 1968, it was forced to close. Richard Petty won the very last race held there. For almost 30 years, the speedway lay silent, and a pine forest grew up inside it. Then, in 1997, Bill Crother and a group of preservationists purchased the land in order to protect the unspoiled view of Air Mount, a historic plantation site nearby. Crother knew that races had occurred there at some point, but he didn't realize exactly what was on the property until the group walked the site and discovered artifacts. In 2002, the site was added to the National Register of Historic Places and has since been established as one stop along North Carolina's 1,200-mile Mountains to Sea Trail. Today, the Speedway is a beautiful, secluded area to walk and take in nature. Thanks to the preservation work of Crother and others, several buildings and structures have been restored to give it a bit of the feel of its heyday in the 1950s and 60s. Imagine driving this dirt track at 100 miles per hour and not using your brakes on the turns. Before or after your hike, you might be in the mood for the Hillsboro Barbecue Company. It's North Carolina barbecue at its finest, along with fried catfish and okra, or even a helping of nanner pudding. You know you want some. If you like this video and want to see more like it, help spread the word and share this with any friends you think might be interested. Thanks for watching.